In example 2, we're asked to find the intercepts for this function. And so f of x equals 3 over 4x minus 1 is our function. And to find the intercepts, the x-intercept, we set the function equal to 0. The x-intercept is found where the y or function value is equal to 0. So we set 3 over 4x minus 1 to 0. Now, the problem with trying to solve this is there's no solution to it. And uh, a couple different ways I could try to solve it is I could multiply both sides by 4x minus 1 so that the 4x minus 1 factor in the denominator would divide out. So if I did that, and of course this divides out, then on the left what I have is 3, and of course on the right 0 times anything is 0, so I get 3 equals 0. There's no solution to that. Certainly, certainly 3 is, cannot equal 0. And so, there is no solution. So that means that there are no x-intercepts whatsoever. There is, however, a y-intercept. And we find the y-intercept by substituting 0 in place of x. Remember, to find any intercept, you always put 0 in place of the other variable. So we're going to find f of 0. So x is 0 here. So substituting 0 in place of x, we have 3 over 4 times 0 minus 1. And of course, this part's 0, but that's okay. So we still have 0 minus 1 in the denominator. So 3 divided by negative 1, of course, is negative 3. So this function would have a y-intercept of negative 3. So that's how you find intercepts for actually any function, not just rational functions. In example number 3 here, we're asked to find how the slope of the tangent lines vary on the two branches of this graph. And so, the first of all, we're going to uh, find where the vertical asymptote is, where that uh, non-permissive value is for x. So I would set the 3x minus 4 to 0 to find where that vertical asymptote is. And so solving for x, uh, adding 4 to both sides, I get 3x equals 4. And then dividing out the 3, I get uh, 4 thirds. So x equals 4 thirds is the vertical asymptote. Now 4 thirds is 1 and a third. So on the graph here, there's our vertical asymptote. Now actually it looks like it's really between the 1 and 2. It's uh, graph slightly off here, but I'm trying to make it right in the middle between the two of these. So x equals 4 thirds is our vertical asymptote. Now on the table, the vertical asymptote occurs, occurs here between 1 and 2, not exactly in the, in right in the middle, that would be 1.5, but between the 1 and the 2. Now I'm going to fill in a value here for y for each of these. This is really just a table of values for our function. So negative 1 was the first x value, and the reason I started at negative 1 is because I wanted three numbers below the vertical asymptote on the left, and three numbers above. That's why I started at negative 1 and went up to 4. So for example, f of negative 1, I'm putting negative 1 in place of x here, so 2 over 3 times negative 1 minus 4. And so that's negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. So we have 2 over negative 7 or negative 2 sevenths. Now if I divide that out, and I want decimals here because I'm going to use my slope formula to find the slope of these uh, secant lines and, and use them to draw inferences to tangent lines. And so this value here in the chart will be negative 0.286 approximately. And so I could do the same thing. Uh, the point of this whole exercise is to show all those calculations. But if I put 0 to 4 in, I would get these from my y values. Now, I'm going to refer to these uh, points as P, Q, R, S, and T, so I don't have to continually say the point that starts with negative 1 or 0 or 1, or etc. And I'll find slopes of secant lines between P and Q and then Q and R and then draw inferences to tangent lines. So here's my slope formula. And so first of all, I'm going to start with the slope of the line segment PQ. So to find the slope of the line segment between P and Q, I would go negative 0.5 minus 0.286. So negative 0.5, now minus negative is the same as adding 0.286, over 0 minus negative 1, which is the same as 0 plus 1. And so that simplifies to negative 0.214. And I'll, I'll generalize here after I do all my slopes. So now I want to do q to r. And I'm going to put the slopes beside the table here. So there's my negative 0.214. Kind of looks like the same place you'd put the first differences in the table. But I'm putting it between because it shows between points p and q. So now we'll do q to r. 
So negative negative 2 minus negative 0.5, same as negative 2 plus 0.5, over 1 minus 0. And that works out to negative 1.5. So we'll put that in the beside the table here. Now that's an example of two secant lines to the left of the vertical asymptote. Now I'm going to do a two a couple above. So I'll do s to t next. So 0.4 minus 1 here over 3 minus 2. And that works to put negative 0.6. So we'll put negative 0.6 here. And one more between points t and u. 0.25 minus 4 over 4 minus 3. And that works out to negative 0.15. And we'll put that beside the chart here as well. Now, notice what now these these are secant lines, so we'll we'll talk I'll talk about the secant line slopes and then draw inferences to if we were actually drawing tangent lines. And actually I'll draw that in the graph in a moment. You can see what that looks like. Notice as you go close to the vertical asymptote from the left, you have a negative slope and it's becoming a larger negative value, um, a steeper negatively sloped line. What's happening on the right side of the vertical asymptote is, again, if you're further from the asymptote, it's still negative, but the closer you get the asymptote, the steeper the line is. See, this would be a steeper negatively sloped line than this one. And so we say the tangent lines, the tangent lines get larger negative slopes, they're steeper, towards the vertical asymptote on the left. So as you approach in this way, the, the tangent lines are negatively sloped and they get steeper. And the same thing happens as you approach from the right side. Now what that looks like in the graph is this. If I were to draw some tangent lines, and there's one, so this isn't too close to the vertical asymptote because the point of tangency is around here. But if I draw another one that's closer, so the point of tangency is probably around here, and another one even closer, and another one even closer. Notice that now that point of tangency is getting close to the vertical asymptote. So they're all negatively sloped. They all slope down as you go from left to right. And the closer we get to the vertical asymptote, the steeper they get. And that's what this is saying. A negatively sloped line and then a steeper negatively sloped line as you approach from the left. The same thing happens on the right. So that's negatively sloped. Point of tangency is around here. Now I'll move my point of tangency closer to the vertical asymptote, okay, steeper. And then I'll move it closer there. The point of tangency is around there and it's steeper yet. And one more, point of tangency is probably around here and it's even steeper. And so that's what this is inferring. Uh, negatively sloped a little ways from the vertical asymptote. And if I go closer, it's negatively sloped and steeper because this number, 0 0.6, is bigger than 0.15. And so that's, that's the idea, how they're getting steeper. And that's the end of the lesson.